Hello, my name is Christopher Houston, and today I want to talk to you about a method you can use to help you get over your fear of public speaking. I have found that this method works with speeches, presentations, short talks, and writing certain term papers. The main roadblock for everyone when it comes to public speaking is fear, right? Whether you're giving a YouTube video, whether you're giving a presentation, a speech, we all are fearful for some reason. And the reason I think we're afraid of public speaking is because we are afraid that we might forget what to say. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about how to remove that fear of not knowing what you are going to say. The first step is to prepare the beginning and ending of your speech. For instance, I always start my speeches with, hello, my name is Christopher Houston. And today I want to talk to you about whatever it is for my closing. I end with something catchy, like a quote. Then I say, thank you very much, good night, and God bless. Having something to say at the end of your speech helps when it's time to close out. Have you ever been in a meeting or WebEx or, or something like that, or a uh, Zoom call, and the person leading the Zoom call, they ask, uh, anybody got any questions? And then there's an awkward silence. Then the person says, OK, well, if there's nothing else, I guess maybe we can end the call. <laughs> it, it's funny. Look, I end all my calls with thank you very much. Good night and God bless. And then I hit the end button. You see, throughout my presentation, especially on Zoom or WebEx, I will ask if anyone has questions almost after every point or I will say, does that make sense? If I do this throughout the speech or presentation, there shouldn't be any questions at the end. And if there is, the people should be ready to give you those questions. Now, you have your beginning and your end prepared. Let's get into why you are here. The four principles you can follow when writing and delivering your speech. About 10 years ago, I read a book called Speak to Win by Brian Tracy. In that book, it outlines several methods of how to compose your speech. The technique that resonated with me the most is the windshield wiper method. When giving a talk, you always state a fact. You do that first. You see, you have both a right brain and a left brain, basically the right side of your brain and the left side of your brain. The left side of your brain is activated by facts and logic and information. The right side is activated by feelings and visual images. Here's a disclaimer. Once I teach you this method, it's going to be weird when you listen to speakers in the future. You see, all speakers use some variation of what I'm going to teach you today. The first step in the windshield wiper method is you state a fact and you follow with the story. I always do this for the first point of my speech. I do this one first because at the beginning of your speech, you're the most nervous. So if you start with a point in a, just a flat out story, then it'll help you calm your nerves. Let me give you an example of starting with a fact and following with a story. I gave a speech one time and stated this fact. Application of your education is key. I told the story of my daughter applying her education. My wife and I have been sending my daughter to a private Christian type of school since she was five years old. And this happened around that time. The schools teach good Christian values, values like it's good to serve others. At the time, my daughter and I had a routine. I would pick Kiana up and we would go straight home and we would get home. I would cook her dinner, throw it in the microwave, bring it to her. She'd already have her little table tray ready and her TV was on. And yes, I cooked it in the microwave. Don't judge me. The thing is, everything would be set. I would bring her food in and she would eat her food. Well, this particular day, I we, we do our same routine. Come in, she goes in her room, I go to cook her, her dinner, I bring it in there to her, and as I'm walking out, she's like, Dad, on your way out, can you turn the TV on for me? Now, mind you, she's about six years old. And I said, Kiana, now you, you we have the same routine every day. You got up in the bed, why don't you turn the TV on like you normally do every day? She just looks at me with those eyes and says, Dad, aren't you supposed to serve the ones you love? And I said, yes, Kiana. So I turned the TV on and walked out. You see, in that story, 
I talked about me and my daughter. That helps connect with the people that are right brain, the ones that like stories with feelings and visual images. So remember, start with the fact and follow with the story. The second step is state a fact and follow with a quote. In my speeches and talks, I always use quotes. Let me give an example. Here's a fact. Move beyond your own self-limiting beliefs. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. That's a quote by my dad. Fact, move beyond your own self-limiting limiting beliefs. Charles Schwab said, when a man puts a limit on what he will do, he places a limit on what he can do. Fact, always strive to add value to others. It's hard to feel bad about yourself when you're doing something good for someone else. That's a quote by John Maxwell. Fact, strive to be consistently productive. Michael Angel was quoted saying, if you develop the habits of success, you'll make success a habit. Fact. Good management of bad experiences leads to great growth. John McDonald once said, every problem introduces a person to himself. Reinforce your facts with quotes. Next, state a fact and follow it with an example. Now that's our third point we're gonna go over. Fact, my wife and I completed our bachelor's degree at the same time in 2004. It taught us time management and perseverance. And here's why. We got deployed to Saudi Arabia around 2002, not long after 9-11. While we were there, we still continued to take courses online for Wayland Baptist University. We did this so that we could graduate together before leaving Hawaii in 2004. We were working 12 hour shifts, six days a week, but we made time and we persevered. Being in the same graduation class was a great experience and we will cherish it forever. Here's another example, fact. Getting my master's degree taught me to pick a career that's growing and one that has a high return on investment because you put a lot of time in when you go to school. I graduated with a master's degree in information technology management in 2006. I was talking to my son the other day. He's in the IT field right now. He's in cybersecurity. He said, Dad, I'm glad I followed the blueprint of going into the IT field. He said that because the field is still growing to this day and cybersecurity professionals are paid very well. On the flip side, a friend of mine worked at a college on the East Coast. He said, he called me, he said, Chris, you wouldn't believe this. This guy comes to my office and he says, hey, can you help me find a job? I graduated last year and I still have, haven't been able to find a job. So he says, fine, bring in your resume, bring in all of the information that you can have to add to your resume and we'll see what we can do. And before he walks out to go, this, go get his stuff, the guy turns or my friend asks him, hey, we've got one quick question for you. What's your degree in? And the guy turns and says, oh, romance literature. The bottom line is pick a career that's growing and that's marketable. That way you get a return on your investment. Lastly, state a fact and follow it with a numerical illustration. Here's an example of that. And let's stick with education. In a speech I gave in 2012, I stated the fact that the more you learn, the more you earn. Numerical illustration, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, 8% of Americans complete an associate's degree and they earn about $4,200 per month. 17% of Americans complete a bachelor's degree and they earn about $5,400 per month. Lastly, 6.7% of Americans complete a master's degree and they earn approximately $6,800 per month. And you, you're probably asking yourself, where do you get these numerical illustrations? Where do you get these numbers? I'm glad you asked. You can get numerical illustrations from books you've read. You can get numerical illustrations from studies that you've read. And you can get numerical illustrations from documentaries. And we all like to watch documentaries. Finally, you can get numerical illustrations from websites like the Bureau of Labor and Statistics or a news website. The first speaker that I heard in person was this chief and he was in the Air Force and it was around 1999. He reached into his pocket and put out a napkin. Then he said he forgot his speech. So while they were introducing him, he wrote down a few points and proceeded to reach into his pocket and give his speech off that napkin. I was amazed he could go on and on seemingly without any notes. But after reading the book, Speak to Win, completing my competent communicator certification with Toastmasters 
and completing speaking for influence training with the John Maxwell program, now I see how that chief was able to speak so flawlessly. He made a point, told a story. He made a point and gave an example in story format. He made a point and gave a quote related to the point. Then he told a story related to the quote. That was pretty cool. And he made a point and followed up with a numerical illustration. Follow this method and you will be able to get over your fear of public speaking. Lastly, I have to stress the importance of practice before you give your speech. Practice by saying the words out loud, not just going over them in your head. After writing my speech, I go over the speech at least three times, reading it out loud before I go in front of an audience or get in front of this camera. Fact, practice is very important when preparing for a speech. Zig Ziglar was quoted saying, repetition is the mother of learning, the father of action, and the architect of accomplishment. I appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. And if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. My name is Christopher Houston. Thank you very much. Good night and God bless.